हेलो फ्रेंड्स नमस्कार वेलकम टिल नाउ वी हैव डिस्कस्ड बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट इन द बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट ओनली वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट करंट अकाउंट ट्रांजैक्शंस कैपिटल अकाउंट ट्रांजैक्शंस एंड एरर्स एंड ओमिशंस नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ रिजर्व्स एंड आफ्टर दैट वी विल डिस्कस सम अदर कॉन्सेप्ट फॉर एग्जाम्पल ऑटोनोमस वर्सिज एकोमोडेटिव ट्रांजेक्शन्स इम्पोर्ट कवर स्पेशल ड्रॉइंग राइट एटसेट्रा राइट सो इन दिस सेशन द कवरेज इज गोइंग टू बी लाइक दिस वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द फॉरन एक्सचेंज रिजर्व स्पेशल ड्रॉइंग राइट इंपॉर्टेंट बैलेंसेस बीओपी ट्रेंड्स सिंस इंडिपेंडेंस एकोमोडेटिव वर्सिज ऑटोनोमस ट्रांजेक्शन्स इम्पोर्ट कवर and the previous year questions now reserves so in the overall scheme of balance of payment i hope you remember that there was total four four components of the bop the first component is current account transactions the second component is capital account transactions the third component is <coughs> sorry errors and omissions and finally we have reserves right so this reserves we are talking about here i hope you got the point so let us discuss this reserve so this reserve basically means foreign exchange reserve this foreign exchange this can also be abbreviated as forex so this is also meant uh, this is also called forex reserve now it has four different components it has four different components first foreign currency assets foreign currency means the currency of all the countries except our own country right so those currencies they are combined together and they are called foreign currency assets the second category is gold stock of rbi so all of us know that reserve bank of india has a stock of gold so that stock of gold also becomes part of the foreign exchange reserve third reserve tranche of imf we will discuss about it separately and then we have special drawing rights this is also of the imf right now so before we move ahead let us see the quantum of foreign exchange reserves in india so as per the latest economic survey of 2019 20 this foreign exchange reserve if we calculate in us dollar billion in 2016 17 the quantum was approximately 370 us dollar billion after that in 2017 18 it increased to 424 dollar us dollar billion and in 1920 20, it increased to 461.2 dollar billion and this is as on you know january 2020 so we can see there has been a consistent increase in the foreign exchange reserve the major reason behind this consistent increase is is the increase in the quantum of foreign capital so the foreign capital in the form of 
foreign direct investment and foreign portfolio investment has been increasing. So it is more because of capital inflows rather than current account inflows. So on the current account we have current account deficit but on the current capital account we have surplus and because of that there is a increase in the forex reserves. Now coming to the first item the first item is foreign currency assets. So what are the components of the foreign currency assets? This foreign currency assets consist of three items. What are these three items? The first item is the currencies of various other countries. So the currencies of US, currency of Canada, the currency of UK, the currency of European Union, France, China, Japan, Brazil, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, so on and so forth. All the other countries except India. That is part of the first component. So it consists of currencies of various other countries. Second, we have foreign currency deposits held by RBI. Held by RBI with, with whom? So RBI is having the foreign currency deposit. So just like we have our bank deposit with the bank, with a particular bank. Similarly, these foreign currency deposits are held by the RBI with number one, foreign central banks. Right. For example, European Central Bank or any other country's central bank. Just like we have RBI in India. Similarly, all the countries have their own central bank. So when we have the balances in the countries, other countries central bank, then this is included in the foreign currency deposit held by RBI with the foreign central bank. Then we have foreign deposit with the BIS, Bank for International Settlement. Right. So I hope you remember the discussion of the Basel norms. There we discussed Bank for International Settlement is located in Switzerland. Right. So this BIS and the third is non-deposit taking institutions. So there are different institutions, for example, uh, Asian Development Bank, World Bank and other institutions. So the deposit which we have, the RBI have with those institutions that is also included in the foreign currency assets. Third item is the deposits agreement with the IMF trust account. So there is a IMF trust account. Whatever deposit we have in there, that is also part of the foreign currency assets. Now, because these currencies and deposits are kept with various different countries. Therefore, the question arises, what should be the reporting language? So in our balance of payment, should we show them in the domestic currency or should we show them in the foreign currency of the respective countries? The answer is we indicate and value them. We report them at the US dollar value, US dollar value. The purpose is to simplify the reporting. See US dollar, see uh, US dollar is a very uh, popular currency and almost all the currencies can be converted into US dollar easily. So we take the US dollar as a common currency and we express all the foreign currencies into the US dollar term, right? So the foreign currency assets, they are expressed in US dollar terms after converting the currencies of various countries by their respective exchange rate against the US dollar. So we see what is exchange rate and we convert that with the help of that exchange rate, we convert the foreign currency into the US dollar and we express all these foreign currency assets into the US dollar terms. I hope you understand the concept. Now, next is the gold stock of RBI. Right? The second part of the reserves is gold, gold stock of the RBI. So friends, I hope you remember that in the banking sector, I discussed the concept of minimum reserve system. So the concept of minimum reserve system says that if the RBI wants to issue the currency, then RBI has to keep a minimum reserve of 
सम फॉरेन करेंसी सम गोल्ड एटसेट्रा सो एज पार्ट ऑफ द मिनिमम रिजर्व सिस्टम ए मिनिमम अमाउंट ऑफ गोल्ड इज टू बी कैप बाय द आरबीआई विद इटसेल्फ सो दिस गोल्ड स्टॉक इज दैट मिनिमम रिजर्व सिस्टम गोल्ड ओनली राइट सो इट एक्ट्स एज ए बैकअप टू द इश्यू करेंसी राइट सो दिस इज पार्ट ऑफ द मिनिमम रिजर्व सिस्टम दिस इज पार्ट ऑफ द मिनिमम रिजर्व सिस्टम ऑफ आरबीआई एंड इट इज इज कैप टू मीट द अनएक्सपेक्टेड बीओपी क्राइसिस सो इन केस देर इज बीओपी क्राइसिस वी आर शॉर्ट ऑफ कैपिटल और करंट अकाउंट एंड फ्लोज इन दैट केस वी कैन मेक द पेमेंट फ्रॉम द गोल्ड अकाउंट राइट सो दिस दिस गोल्ड कैन बी यूज इन केस ऑफ बीओपी क्राइसिस If we talk about the quantity, how much is the quantity of this gold? So the quantity of this gold is five fifty-seven point seven seven tons of the gold, out of which two sixty-five point four nine tons are kept in the safe custody with the Bank of England and with the Bank for International Settlements. So Bank of England and Bank of International Settlement (BIS) we have some gold with them also, right? So recently there was a news. That in the Sonbhadra district of Uttar Pradesh, we found thirty-five hundred uh, tons of gold. But later on, we come to know that that news is not appropriate, not correct. The amount of gold is around one twenty-five tons only. So as of now, the RBI has five fifty-seven tons of gold. Right? Again, this is also expressed in the terms of US dollar. So we don't express in terms of Domestic currency, we don't express it in the terms of rupees. We express it in the terms of US dollar only. Now, the third item is reserve trench. Reserve trench. The third item is reserve trench. So, reserve trench is basically let let me tell you. So, first of all, there is an organization called International Monetary Fund. and this international monetary fund it has various members for example india is also one of the member now each of them each of these members they have member quota that means they have some share in the imf for example the india's quota is 10% so this is this this we are taking as an example this is not the accurate figure for example india's membership quota is 10% now out of this 10% the 25% of this 10% 25% amount of this 10% this is reserve trench so this will be kept with the rbi itself and this can be used at discretion of india any time right so 25% of 10% means 2.5% of the total imf quota this can be used by india at any point of time for any purpose at its own discretion right now let us see a certain proportion of the member country's quota is specified as its reserve trench a certain proportion of the member's country's quota is specified as its reserve trench so this is typically kept as 25% certain proportion as of now this is typically kept as 25% the member country can access its reserve trench funds at its discretion right and is not an under an immediate obligation to repay those funds to the rbi to the imf so they can access the fund from the imf but they are not necessarily to repay 
to deposit the amount with the IMF. The member nation reserves reserve tranche are typically 25% of the members quotas. The reserve tranche portion of the quota can be accessed by the member nation at any time. At any time. Whereas the rest of the members quota that means the 75% is inaccessible. Right. So I hope you got the concept of reserve tranche. Now special drawing rights. This is very very important concept. Please listen to this conversation very very carefully. So friends the word special drawing rights this word got originated in 1969. What is the background? So friends we started we, we, we established the International Monetary Fund in the world and we wanted that all the countries should involve into the trade and capital transactions with each other in different part of the country in, in different part of the world right so the countries should transact with each other in the form of import and export uh, foreign capital investment etc for that there is a requirement of liquidity right so we need some liquidity we need some liquid assets we need some liquid assets a common currency liquid asset sorry this is liquid asset we need a liquid asset a common currency which can be utilized all across the world and which is acceptable all across the world so we identified that there are two possible currencies one is the gold another is the US dollar so this US dollar and the gold they are the two possible uh, liquid currencies which are acceptable by the entire world and which are available also right but soon we started facing their shortage so we we felt that they are short in quantity they are not frequently available they are not easily available because of that because of this liquidity crisis in 1969 this IMF it established the concept of special drawing right as an international reserve asset so this international reserve asset was created this international reserve asset was created to solve this liquidity problem which arose because of the shortage of the gold and US dollar. So under this international reserve asset the concept of basket system was introduced. What is the meaning of this basket system? This means that a group of group of currencies will be kept together and the average value of all those currencies will determine the value of each unit of this international reserve asset so this international reserve asset it will be divided into the units individual units and the value of each individual unit is decided by the average price of this group of currencies so this is the basket system so initially this basket system was kept at 16 currencies so we took 16 currencies as part of this basket and later on it got reduced to 4 and finally in 2016 we also added one more currency of China and it this basket system as of now it has total 5 currencies right so there are few important points to note down first of all it is not backed by any gold or any foreign currency so there is no backing it is called paper gold it is called paper gold and there is no backing of any kind of metal or any other foreign currency asset right so the value is derived from all these group of currencies but does not mean that it is backed by all these currencies this is the first point that you need to take care second point is that it is accessible only and only to its member countries 
it is accessible only and only to its member countries it is not accessible to any other country right so let me write these points separately the first point is there is no claim the second point is so it can be accessed it is accessible only by member countries of IMF third it is used primarily for BOP settlement by the member countries so in case any member is so this is the main purpose you, you have to keep it keep in mind what is the main purpose the main purpose is if any member of the IMF is facing any kind of BOP problem the country is facing shortage of foreign exchange reserves in that case it can use its SDR amount for settlement of the BOP it can use its BOP it can use its SDR quota SDR amount for settlement of its foreign claims right so this is part of the foreign ex foreign exchange reserve only as part of the foreign exchange reserve it can be utilized for payment of the foreign obligations right so the primary purpose is for using it for the BOP settlement I hope the concept is very clear to you now let us understand from the language part so in 1960s we faced the liquidity dilemma under the dollar and gold standard in 1969 SDR was created and the value of SDR was equal to one dollar each in 1971 in Nixon shock so there was a there was an incident where this incident is not important for us that is why I'm just you know going through going through fast no Nixon shock convertibility between gold dollar dollar was ended in 1974 the SDR adopted 16 currency basket system so I told you we are under the basket system in 1981 the number of SDR currencies were cut to 5 in 2001 with the introduction of euro cuts the number of SDR currencies was reduced to 4 and finally in 2016 so this is 2016 the IMF decided to include the yuan in the basket of currencies so the Chinese yuan was introduced so now you can see SDR is an international reserve asset created by the IMF in 1969 SDRs are allocated to the member countries please be careful member countries in proportion to their IMF quota so this is allocated in proportion to their IMF quota or membership quota also called as paper gold as it is not backed by any currency or precious metal so there is no claim against this currency used only among governments only among governments of member countries and IMF for balance sheet of balance of payment settlement so what is the primary purpose of SDR BOP settlement only now why SDR SDR was created so we have discussed this uh, the primary purpose is basically to overcome the problem of gold and US dollar inadequacy right now it was created in response to concerns about the limitations of gold and dollar as a sole means of settling international accounts SDR augments international liquidity by supplementing the standard reserve currencies so the standard reserve currencies that is the dollar and the gold they were they are supplemented by the SDR to increase the international liquidity SDR is a reserve system created by the IMF to help the countries to have BOP that have BOP problems the member countries have to contribute to this account so who contributes to this account the member countries 
the contribution is in proportion to their IMF quota. In proportion to their IMF quota. It is held with the government or the central bank, right? Of the member countries. In India, it is with the RBI's exchange reserve, right? So in India, it is part of the RBI's foreign exchange reserve. So we are studying it as part of the RBI's foreign exchange reserve. Now, how do we determine the value of SDR? The value of SDR is based on the basket of key international currencies. So we discussed that there are four, there are five currencies. First is US dollar. Second is the Euro of the European Union. Third is the Chinese RMB. Then we have Japanese Yen and we have British Pound Sterling. Please remember these five currencies. They can be asked in the examination, in the prelims examination. First is USA dollar, then we have Euro, then we have Chinese renminbi, then we have Japanese Yen and then we have British Pound Sterling. These are the five currencies. So the question was asked in 2016 because in 2016 this currency was introduced as part of the SDR system, right? So SDR is neither a currency nor a claim on the IMF, rather it is a potential claim on the freely usable currencies of the IMF members, right? So it is neither a currency nor a claim. What is the use of SDR? The For balance of payment settlement, this is very very crucial. The purpose is balance of payment settlement among the members. It can also be used for transactions with the funds, for example, for paying the reserve trench. SDR denominated bank deposit and loans have been offered in private financial market. So these are the uses of SDR. Now how much is the value, how much is the weightage of each of these five currencies? So we discussed that there are total five currencies which are part of the SDR basket system. How much is the weightage of each of these currencies? The highest weightage goes to the US dollar 41%. Second highest goes to the Euro 30%. Third highest to the Chinese RMB. Then we have Japanese Yen and finally we have British Pound. So we do not need to remember the sequence but we should remember that US dollar is having the highest and British Pound is having the lowest proportion. This quota, this weightage is reviewed every five years right? by the IMF's executive board or it can also be reviewed earlier if warranted by the developments. What is the purpose of review? The review ensures that the SDR market basket reflects the relative importance of major currencies in the world trading and the financial system. Right. So in 2016, we introduced the Chinese Yuan, Chinese RMB into the SDR basket. Why? Because the role of China was increasing in the international trading and financial system. So to enhance the SDR's attractiveness as an international reserve asset, we always try to ensure and bring those currencies, those countries' currencies which are having the important role in the uh, market. So <clears throat> we can see reserves, it means foreign exchange reserves and it consists of four different item. The first is foreign currency asset. Then we have gold stock of RBI. Third, we have reserve tranche and then we have special drawing rights. So there are total four concepts. One is current account. We have capital account. We have reserve account and we have errors and omissions. We have discussed each one of these four items. I hope the BOP statement is now very much clear to you. Now let us discuss the important balances. I hope you remember these balances I have already discussed in the first session only. Here I am giving you for revision purpose and for, for ensuring that you get 100% clarity about these balances. So trade balance, trade balance means the export of goods minus the import of goods. So here we do not include the services. Services are not included. Only and only the merchandise item, the goods are included. Only and only the visibles are included, right? So trade balance or balance of visibles. Then we have current account balance. It includes both the visibles balance or trade balance and invisibles balance. This is important. The goods and services balance. Goods and services. The goods balance means trade balance and services balance means 
the known factor services balance do you remember the example for example financial services software services right so known factor services means the services other than the factor services what is the example of factor services factor services means uh, payment of salaries for the labor payment of interest for the capital payment of rent for the property so those items which are given as reward for the factor services they are not included here only and only known factor services the services which are provided by the financial sector software transportation etc they are included here and then we have BOP balance which means the current account balance plus the capital account balance so this this discussion I kept just for revision I know that you already know about this about this concept from the previous session only